and we will begin. So welcome everyone. And uh, today we're going to be doing a model lesson about communication skills. And more specifically, we're going to be looking at push and pull influencing and when we should use them and why we should use them. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself in case you don't know me. So my name is Will Lachette and I am an academic consultant and teacher trainer for National Geographic Learning. Um, I'm from the UK, but I live in Singapore. I've been working in English language teaching since 2001. And I'd just like to find out a little bit about you in terms of who we have here today. So I'm going to launch my first poll. So uh, this is just a segment. It says, which segments do you teach? So I'm interested to see what kind of teachers we have here today. Or you may not be a teacher, and that is fine as well. So if you're not, you can click, I am not a teacher. And you can click as many of these as are true for you. So you can pick one or two or three or four, as many as you teach. Okay, and I'm going to give you a few more seconds. Most of you have already voted. So we've got well, lots of more, more people joining the room all the time. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to share the results. So today we can see that around about half of you, so 48% of you teach teens, 31% um, of you teach university and 19% teach adults. So if you teach those three segments, um, that's really where the lesson we're doing today, that's really where it's aimed. So teens, university and adults. OK, um, if you're teaching very young learners or young learners, um, I hope you enjoy the lesson. I think it's relevant to anyone, really. So I hope you enjoy the lesson anyway. OK, so, um, yeah, the material I'm using today is from our adult program or young adult or adult program called Voices. And this is a seven level integrated skill series. And the one we're looking at today is in British English, although soon it will be available in American English as well. And we're going to be looking at uh, the elementary level, uh, which is A1 on the CEFR. This series what runs all the way from A1 beginners all the way up to C1 advanced. Uh, later on, I'm um, hoping I've got enough time to show you uh, a couple of things from our new professional development uh, title, which is called Breaking Through the Screen. And um, this is really a complete teaching guide for those people teaching online or teaching blended lessons. OK, so this is the unit we're looking at today called People and Places. And uh, this is the opening spread. And we've got this really beautiful picture here um, of a light show, or it's actually called a Luminal Festival. And I'm just wondering, can any of you guess for me, uh, where do you think this is? Where do you think this photo was taken? See so if you can guess from the... Oh, someone's straight in there. Blanquita is straight in there with Germany. I think you might have been in the session earlier. <laughs> M. Sasaki says a European city. Sapta says Germany. Yeah, if you've got very sharp eyes, you can see actually here it says that this is taken in Frankfurt, Germany. But um, I think just a, yeah, just a really lovely photo, which is not related to our lesson today. I just I just like the photo, so I thought I'd mention it. Um, so there are six goals in this unit, and we're going to be looking at this one, uh, which are learn, which is learn about different influencing styles. So. This is lesson D of unit six, influencing people. We can see our lesson goals on the right, learn about influencing styles. And I think it's always a good idea uh, to start the lesson with a speaking activity, which is what every lesson in Voices does. So here, the speaking activity is talking about uh, what do you do to influence people? But I want with you to talk about the word influence and to talk a little bit about what it means. So can you type into the chat box for me? Okay, I'm just gonna take that away. Um, to you, what does the word 
influence mean? If we talk about influencing someone, influencing people, what does that mean? So give me a few ideas. Geraldine says to convince. Ellen says having positive impact on others. To have an effect or an impact. Great. Thank you, Myla. To affect someone's thinking and actions. Right. Very good. That's a very, Nancita, that's a very uh, complete definition you've given me there. Roger says to persuade somebody to do something. Great. So we've got these words popping up persuade, affect, impact. And all of these verbs are talking about a change, right? So at its center, to influence is talking about changing something, yes, to affect or to alter. And what is it changing? It's changing the way that people behave or changing the way that people think. So when I hear that, it immediately raises two questions that I want to answer. So the first question is, why do we want to change the way people behave? Why do we want to change the way people think? So can you type your answer to that question in the chat box? Why do we want to change the way people think or behave? Why do we need to do that? To be better, Sapta says to be better. So for who to be better? For improvement to gather support. Educators do that. Yes, educators do that, don't we? Okay, so as educators, we want to, uh, we want to change the way our students think to make improvement. So one reason we do it is to help other people, right? Okay, to help to, to light the fire, Ellen says, that's right, to light the fire um, that encourages, motivates students, right? Okay, uh, Le T. Hang says to make them do what we want them to. And that's the other side of it, isn't it? That often when we influence people, we can do it as an educator for them, okay, to help them improve. But we can also do it, and we often do it, for, because it's something that we want, isn't it? It's something that we want them to do, right? Great. Okay, so that's the first question is why. Second question is how. So how do we change the way people behave how do we change the way people think? So again, I'm interested to hear your ideas in the chat box. How do we influence people? How do we change the way they behave or the way they think? Ellen says, we show by our own example. We lead by example, right, exactly. We provide a model, right? Uh, we give them rules, okay? We can write down rules. Myla says, consistent practice and immersion by communicating and modeling. Uh, Molam says we show the impact, right? I think you mean maybe we show the effect. So we show them what will happen and that motivates people, right? Explaining how things work, right? Okay, so we've got some really great ideas here, okay? And yeah, thank you for participating. It's very interesting. Be a role model, says Fumika. Yeah, and I, I think you've done great there. You've given me some really good answers, but it is a very difficult question, especially for, our A1 level uh, language learners, just to ask them, how do you influence people? Um, so it's often a good idea to give, um, to give an example by setting up a situation. So we give people a situation, and we talk about how we can influence them in that situation. It helps people to understand. So that's what we're going to do now. We're gonna look at a couple of relatable um, examples. So the first one, what I'd like you to think about is this. You're planning a holiday with your family and you want to go on, you want to go on a beach holiday, but your family, or we could change this if, you know, um, if you want to with your students, you can always get them to, to change the situation slightly. Maybe they want to talk about their friends or someone else. So you want to go on a beach holiday, but someone else wants to go on a cultural holiday. Uh, maybe that's a city break, okay, with lots of museums and that kind of thing. So in this situation, how would you, you want to go on a beach holiday, how would you influence them? How would you change the way they think? How would you persuade them that a beach holiday is the best type of holiday? So in the chat box, can you give me an example? What would you do? So I've got a couple of ideas. Right, Ellen, I would point out the advantages of going to the beach, right? So I tell them, make a list, right? These are the reasons we should go to a beach because these are the benefits. 
Blanquita says, talk to them about the weather. Right. So pick a beach holiday with the perfect weather, somewhere with perfect weather, maybe a beach in Thailand or something like that. And we persuade them this way. Yeah. I was thinking maybe I would show them pictures. Oh, yeah. So Nancy just got my idea. Show them pictures of past experience. So you show them a picture of you on this beautiful beach and you go, look, you know, wouldn't you want to go there? Don't you want to go and visit this beach? Okay, so these are some techniques that we can use, right? Good. Okay, let's try another one. So maybe even more relatable. You're going for dinner with a friend, okay? You want to have Italian food, but your friend wants Japanese food. So what are you going to do to influence your friend to do what you want, to have Italian food with you? Now, obviously, again, with your students, tell your students, you don't have to do Italian food, Japanese food. Pick a type of food that you like and then try and persuade your, you know, your partner. All right. So, you know, you don't have to use these examples here. We could say which one is healthier. Right. OK, so we could say Italian food is healthier than Japanese. Not sure that's true, but yes, we could. OK, look, promise to pay. Right. OK, so you can almost bribe. Right. You can say I'll pay for it. It's my treat. Right persuade the person to my first up right okay so Froiland says you can tell your friend look I've, I've never had I've never had this type of food before I really want to try it. it's really important to me great that's a very powerful technique right okay that's a using using their emotions compare and contrast the tastes okay talk to them about the benefits okay share my experience so we could tell them how great the italian food is tell them oh, i know this restaurant you've never been there you'll love it okay we could yeah persuade them using persuasive language so the key here is that we're getting we're giving students relatable uh, situations so we're giving them context and then they can think about what they would do and this helps them to understand the ways that we already use language to influence people, okay? One more task for you. Can you think of any other everyday situations in which we influence other people? So apart from what we want to eat or where we want to go, can you think of any other kind of common everyday situations where we influence people to do what we want? Let me give you a clue. So maybe you're at home in the evening with your family, okay? And uh, you're thinking what you want to do together, right? Right, what, what TV show to watch? Exactly, what TV show to watch? So, you know, you want to watch this, they want to watch that. How are you going to persuade them? How are you going to influence them? Someone's put here, get up early, right, okay. Maybe you want to get up early, but maybe your kids want to lie in bed until late on a Saturday, right? Or maybe it's the other way around, <laughs> probably more likely. How do you influence them? Okay, which baby outfit to choose? Right, okay, so maybe you're out with your partner, your, your wife, your husband. Which clothes are we going to put on our baby today? All right, how are you going to influence them? Which book we're going to read? Yeah, OK. I mean, we might read the same book together. Maybe that's in your class, right? Which book should we read in our class? Should we take the car or should we take the train? Right. These are great examples. Yes. So the point we want to make here is that everybody exerts their influence on other people all the time. We already do it um, in our everyday lives, but obviously influencing people is something very important in a business sense okay in our jobs okay is something that we also use influence for very nice okay so we're going to now move on from there and i'm going to swap over to the classroom presentation tool for the rest of this presentation so the classroom presentation tool or cpt it's basically uh, a tool um a piece of software which has all of the student book and all of the workbook content, has all of the multimedia on there, has all of the answer keys. So it's just a fantastic resource for teaching. So I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment and we're going to do a new share, a screen share and go over to my classroom presentation tool. So here we are. So you should be able to see now I'm in my piece of software. 
and we're going to go to unit six. As I said, I've got student book and workbook content. Let's go to the student book and we're going to unit D. And I'm going to load up today's lesson. So this is the two page spread, which is the lesson. Over here, we can see the activity we just did, that speaking activity at the beginning. Can I just check that uh, you can see uh, the classroom presentation tool, the CPT? Can you type yes if you can see that? Just so that I know we're looking at the same thing. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks to everyone for letting me know. Okay, so next we're going to uh, we're going to watch a video. Um, it's called a My Voice video, and this is presented by one of the authors of Voices, uh, Chia Swan Chong, an ex expert in communication. And we're going to be looking at two different styles of influencing. Can anyone name for me in the chat box what are the two styles of influencing? The two techniques we're learning about today. Has anyone read the abstract or the, uh, the title of the session we're doing today? What are the two types of influencing we're, re we're learning about today? myla has got it, push and pull. Okay, push style and pull style, well done. Okay, so let's go in. Uh, we're going to the activity and we can see we've got uh, We've got, yes, a task here, which is putting these in the right order. And we've got a video over here on the left. So we're going to watch the first bit of this video. And I'm going to pause it midway and we'll discuss a little bit about what we are hearing. So I'm just making sure I'm sharing the sound. OK, so I'm going to play the first part of this video. There are many ways of influencing people. One common way to talk about influencing is to talk about pushing and pulling. The pushing and pulling styles of influencing are very different. One is about pushing our ideas and suggestions on to other people. The other is about pulling out their ideas, their needs, their thoughts, and building on that. Some people think influencing is about persuading others to do things their way. They feel like they know the right way to do things. These people often use a push style of influencing. Here is what normally happens with push influencing. One, I tell you my idea. Two, I say why it's a great idea. Three, you agree and you change your mind. The push style is really common. Sometimes you're the only person with an idea. Or sometimes you have more information about the topic than others. It's also useful when you need to influence someone and you have very little time to do this. But the push style only works some of the time. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. So Chia has just explained to us, okay, what push style influencing is. And over here, we've got three steps. We've got, I say why it's a great idea. You agree and change your mind and I tell you my idea. So remember, this is for A1, okay, sort of elementary level students, okay, but for maybe teenagers, young adults and adults. Um, so you just heard it. So what is the correct order for this process? And Mullen was putting BCA, Marion was putting CAB, a lot of you are putting in CAB. OK, so let's try that. OK, so let's put C first. So first step, I tell you my idea. A, I say why it's a great idea. And B, you agree and change your mind. And that's something that we're all very familiar with, I think. But maybe it's the first time you've heard that called push influencing, right? Um, 
so yeah so this is this is what Chia is telling us that um the way that we can do that um the last thing Chia said there before i pause she said the push style of influencing only works some of the time so i'm interested to hear your ideas here so why do you think that this style where I tell you my idea, I say, well, it's great. And then suddenly you change your mind. Why does that only work some of the time? Can you think of any reasons why that doesn't always work? Think about maybe the type of person you're talking to, uh, maybe the situation that you're in. So does anyone have an idea? Sasaki says the other person's not listening to you. Right. Okay. So if the other person isn't listening to you, it's not going to work. Olam says other people have ideas too. Yes. And I think that is a very good point. Okay. Other people might think that their idea is better than yours. Right. Good. So that's two reasons. Yeah. Others may have an opposing idea. Thank you, Myla. And Sita says maybe there's a weak reason. Yes. Okay. So if if you have uh, maybe there's a, a problem with your logic or maybe your idea isn't very good, then probably this is, won't work. Right. So for push influencing to work, you have to you have to have a good idea and you have to be convincing. Right. The other person, uh, Nibori, says the other person might not be comfortable if you're being very persistent. Right. If you're too pushy. Right. If you keep pushing your idea too much, they might they might get turned off the idea right great idea from molam again okay others might have more knowledge about this topic these are great ideas okay let's watch uh, next few seconds and see what chia says about this some people don't like others telling them what to do so i think we mentioned this some people yeah some people don't like being told what to do uh, maybe you're like that or maybe you know someone like that yourself okay and if this is the case i won't want to accept your idea they like having their own opinions. They like to own the idea. OK, second reason, people like to have their own ideas, right? So this is exactly as we said earlier. A different way of getting people to change their minds is to understand what they want and then to persuade them to want that change. This is often called the pull style. Here is what normally happens with pull influencing. One, I ask for your thoughts and ideas. Two, I ask questions to help you develop those ideas. Three, I build on your ideas. Four, together we agree on a plan. There is no right or wrong way to influence people. By pushing, you can make people listen to you. And by pulling, you can make people feel that the ideas are their own. Sometimes the push style works better. And at other times, the pull style is more effective. If you want to be successful at influencing, you need to be good at using both styles and choosing the right one in different situations. Okay, great. And so that is the end of our video there. Um, so let's do the second task. So I think everyone's familiar with the push style of influencing, but what about the pull style? So how, how does that work? What are the stages here? So we've got B, C, D, and A. Someone's put in here D, B, A, C. Mariam put in D, B, A, C. D, B, A, C, D, B, A, C. Okay, lots of people seem to be agreeing. Let's have a look. So first one, definitely i ask you for your thoughts and ideas right so notice here, i'm not telling you okay push is tell and pull is ask so i ask you for your idea next i ask questions to help you develop those ideas so ask more questions okay and build up that idea so a i build on your ideas and finally together we agree on a plan so the pull style 
is is basically eliciting ideas isn't it so as teachers this is something we're familiar with okay we we ask questions and we make them think that it's completely their idea when often actually it's the questions that we are asking okay which leads them in that direction through leading questions so let's just check the answers and well done we can see that we got all of these correct okay now i think this video is really really interesting um and i think that it's it's great for language learning because you know it's got lots of interesting language in it but it's also really important that it's teaching students about a life skill um and it's also raising self-awareness about basically communication style right okay are you good at doing this do you know about this and i've got a question for you um although you, i'm sure you've used both of these techniques before did you know that you were using push style and pull style influencing. So were you aware of that or is that something new that you've learned today? So I'm interested in the chat box. So is that something you already knew or is it something, is it something new for you which you've just found out? So I'm just curious to see uh, how many of you were familiar with these concepts, push and pull influencing. Okay, Mario says I've used these before. Okay, that's great. So definitely I, I had used them. Yeah, so Sasaki says something I knew unconsciously, right? So you knew it unconsciously, but that's a good word, isn't it? Unconscious, that although we knew about this and we did it, okay, perhaps we weren't aware of what we were doing. And so when we, when we, when we give it a name and we give, you, give a process, it makes us self-aware right? Self-aware. And it means that we can improve on it. We can work on it. We can get better at it. Um, and I think that's something that a lesson like this is really great for our students um, in terms of boosting their life skills. Okay, let's have a look at the next activity. Okay, so Exercise number three. So this is actually, it says we're going to watch again. We're not going to watch it again because of time. Um, but the next activity, uh, students are going to watch again, and then they're going to decide whether these statements apply to push or pull influencing. So it's really getting them to think a bit more deeply about what they mean and see if they can distinguish between the two. So if I say to you, number one, it's useful when you don't have much time, Number one, it's useful when you don't have much time. Do you think that's push or pull? So Zenaida says it's push, I agree. So number one, when you don't have time, it's just gonna be, yeah, this is what you should do. That's push influencing, right? How about number two, you learn about what other people want. So Zenaida's there again, okay, well done. Okay, pull, yeah, that's definitely pull. So with pull influencing, we're asking questions to find out what they want. So it's a much gentler approach. So these are great for distinguishing between the two. And we could take this further, okay, with our students. We could do an activity where we can get them to brainstorm. I want you to do this. What type of person do you think would be very good at push influencing? What type of person or maybe what type of job do you think they might have? So what do you think in the chat box? What, what type of person would be naturally good at push style influencing? People in sales, right? Okay, salespeople, teachers, uh, people doing business proposals, people in marketing, right? Um, and can you give me an adjective to describe that kind of person? So you've given me jobs, how about an adjective to describe that type of person? Bossy, very good. Okay, bossy people might be good at pushing their ideas, demanding people, persistent, aggressive, extrovert, right, persuasive. Some really, really good ideas here. Um, how about the other side then? Someone who might be naturally good at pull influencing, what type of jobs might they have? Counselors, teachers, right, As someone who's good at listening. Okay, leader, right. Okay, so uh, Kamel, I'm not sure if you said that for push or pull. I think for leaders, we could say for both, right? But yeah, I think in my opinion, a good leader should be, 
should be good at drawing ideas out from other people, right? Okay, because the leader can't know everything, but I think a leader's skill should be getting those ideas out from other people. Business coach, life coach, right, great ideas. Um, and how about adjectives to describe this type of person? Someone good at pull, uh, into influencing, caring, assertive, okay? And a go someone who's good at negotiating, right, yeah. Someone who's calm, someone who's passive, okay, interesting. Right, so completely different, completely different set of adjectives we've got here, right? That's really good. And I can see that from what you're saying, I can see that you've really got a good understanding of the differences between push or pull uh, influencing. Kamal says it depends on the situation, right? But usually good leaders uh, use the pull method most of the time because he believes in teamwork. Exactly. OK, great. Now. We're going to do uh, the next activity, OK, which is a quiz. And the quiz is going to we're going to find out if you are a pusher or a puller. OK, but before we do that, I'm going to do I'm going to launch another little poll for you. And I want you to tell me what you think. Oh, this is the wrong one. I want this one. I want you to tell me, what do you think? Do you think that you are mostly using push influencing? Are you mostly using pull influencing or do you think you're exactly in the middle, 50-50? Okay, so what do you think about your, your personality? Mostly push, mostly pull or exactly in the middle? Let's see what you say. Okay, I'm going to give you a few more seconds. Uh, only 46% of you have voted so far. So let's see if we can get a few more. I'd like to get at least up to 50%. So please vote. Okay, there we go. Gone past 50%. Okay, I'm going to end the poll, okay, and share the results. So this is quite different to the results I had this morning. Well, a little bit different, I guess. Um, so we can see that 58% of you uh, think you're both equally, and more of you think that you're push influencers than pull. So this is the opposite to what I had this morning. This morning we had more pull influencers. So 25, about a quarter of you say that you are usually use that push style, right? And just over half use both equally. Okay, that's very interesting for me. Now let's have a look at the quiz, okay? So the quiz, are you a pusher or a puller? And um, we've got this nice image up here of a donkey uh, crossing a bridge. And we've got one person pushing and one people, person pulling. Obviously, the donkey doesn't want to go. And I think this tells us in relation to influencing, sometimes we need both styles. or Often you need both to work in tandem okay, for you to really be successful. Um, so let's have a go at this. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to read through this because I think you can read it yourself, but I am going to launch another poll. And I've, all I've done here for this poll is I've just transferred the ideas onto the poll. Um, and I'd like you to read through the, the poll and choose A or B. So you might find that both of these are true for you. So you need to choose the one which you think is better, the one which is more similar to you. So for number one, excuse me, I believe my ideas are often the best. B, I believe other people often have better ideas. So, I mean, of course, sometimes your ideas are better and some people other, sometimes other people's ideas are better, but which one happens to you more often? Do you usually think your ideas are the best or do you usually think other people have the better ideas? Okay, so there are six questions so I want you to read through uh, on the in the poll, okay, and choose A or B, and we're going to see collectively, are we pushers or are we pullers? So remember, 58% of you said both, 25% said push, and 17% said pull. So let's see if our results here give us something similar. All right, so I'm going to give you a few more seconds. We've only got about a third of you have finished at the moment. Okay, remember to, I think you have to hit submit at the end. Okay, so remember to hit that.
interesting comment in the chat box from Mario here. Mario says the student, the type of student you have often influences your approach. So if you have lots of students who are very passive and quiet and don't participate, sometimes they require pushing, okay, and vice versa. Yeah, so we could apply that to students, but to anybody really, right? We could apply that to any person, right? So sometimes the type of character to the person you're talking to, that influences what type of influencing we use, right? It's a very good point. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Maria. Okay, let's see. So we've got over 50%, 54% of you have now completed that. So let's have a look at the results to this. And I'm going to mark the results up on the screen. Okay, so let me get my highlighter, let me get a yellow highlighter. So for number one, okay, 64% of you have gone for B. Okay. Uh, for number two, 57% of you have gone for B. So more of you have gone for B. For number three, a lot of you, okay, 78% of you chose B for that one. For number four, this is a bit closer, 69% chose B. Ah, for number five, I think that people will change their mind when someone they respect tells them what they think. That one, more of you actually chose A. And for the last question, most of you, 73% chose B. OK, so these are our results right now. Obviously, some of you put A and some of you put B, but we can see like especially for this one here, um, we can see that there's a very big difference. So this is 78 percent of you, 78 percent. OK, put B and only 22 put A. So there's a big difference there. OK, now in the chat box, what do you think? Um, which side do you think represents pull influencing? So is it A or B? Which side is pull influencing? Yeah, it's definitely B, isn't it? So from looking at these results here, although most of more of you, 25% said that you are push influencers, we can see that actually collectively as a group, most of us chose the pull influencer answer. Um, and for some of them, there was a, a very clear trend there. Um, if we looked individually, we'd probably find that most of you were a combination of both. But collectively, we can, I, I, can, uh, I can infer from this that collectively, actually, we are more pull influences, which doesn't surprise me because most of us here are teachers today. Let's have a look uh, in the back of the book and see what these results mean. Um, I think you've probably... Uh, inferred what they mean anyway but let's have a quick look over here in the back right so here we go we can see a kind of summary here and it says if you're mostly a you are a pusher okay so for you influencing is about getting people to do what you ask uh, you might push in aggressive way okay but you believe that your ideas are the best uh, mostly bees okay this means you're a puller teamwork is important you think you need to listen to people, you need to understand people, all right? And some of you, of course, will have got some A's and some B's. You understand it's sometimes important to push and sometimes important to pull. You are able to change your influencing style to suit the person and the situation. Okay, so in the chat box for me now, what do you think about, what do you think about this activity is it accurate for you? The results you got, okay, looking at the results here, is that accurate for you? Do you does that kind of reinforce how you feel about yourself or is it completely different? Rex says 100%. Okay, actually, some of you now are only sending your, uh, Rex, you're only sending your messages to hosts and panelists. So if you change that to everyone, uh, same for you, Ray. Okay, same for Shinji. OK, then everyone can see. Everyone can see your results. So some of most of you are putting yes and some of you are putting no, it's different. OK, and if it is different, that's an interesting talking point, isn't it? Why is it different? So why has this quiz given you uh, an, an inaccurate result? So although most of you are saying yes. OK, so I think that's a nice, interesting uh, activity for our students, really leads into some great discussion as well. Now, 
you basically just did a reading task, didn't you? So you went through and you read those and then you chose A or B. Um, I'm a little bit worried that some of my students at uh, A1 level might not have fully understood that. So I've set up another activity here. And what I've done is I've put push and pull influencing and then I've uh, just taken screenshots of the the options and I've put them onto little cards here. So maybe we can do this together and you can help me, okay? So the first one says, I often tell people about the good points and bad points of my ideas. So what do we think? Do you think that is push or pull influencing? Molam says push. Okay, why? How do we know that? Why do you think that is push influencing? And Sita says, Paul, right, it's self-centered, isn't it? It's, it's my ideas, right? It's about my ideas. So pushing is about selling your idea, right? So yeah, I agree. Okay, how about this one? I often suggest many ideas and plans. Okay, what do you think about that? Push. Okay, Kamal says, Paul, some of you are saying pull. So quite even. So we've got push and pull. So can you explain to me why? If you put push, why is it push? And if you put pull, why is it pull? So you can type in push and then give a reason or pull and give a reason. Because we've got quite a split here. Okay, push. I'm the source of all the ideas. Right. OK. Yeah. Can says suggest ideas. It's express yourself. Right. So, yeah, I agree. I, th I think this one um, is going to be is going to be push influencing because it's about you. OK, it's about you giving those ideas. Yeah. OK, so someone's put in here uh, Del Tenor, but pull. I research a lot before I suggest. So that's an interesting point. I mean, research means reading about something, looking for it, but, but that's not pull influencing, okay? Research is informing your opinion so that you can then give it to someone else. But pull influencing is about getting other people, okay? It's not about research, it's about giving other people to give their opinion, right? So I would say this one, it's my ideas, I'm suggesting the idea, so it's definitely push. Okay, let's try another one. How about this one? I believe other people often have better ideas. Okay, what do we think for that one? It's the last one we'll do. I believe other people often have better ideas. Okay, so most of you are putting pull here. Okay, why is it pull? Because it's talking about being considerate. Right. It's talking about other people. OK, it's talking about other people's ideas. So this is related to pull influencing because it means that you're going to get those ideas from other people. You're going to ask them for their ideas. This is pull influencing. Right. So basically push is from the self. OK, pull is from other people. So this uh, I think. Uh, we can see here it's interesting because some of you had different ideas and this is great when you put students into groups because they you know they, they will disagree about this and they, and they will be able to discuss it and explain so what we can then do later on okay I often give others a chance to talk about their opinion so their opinion is pull I believe my ideas are often the best that's push okay and I develop other people's is going to be pull and then once we've done that Okay, what we can then do once they've done that is they can match them together. Okay, these two are linked. This is push, this is pull, right? I believe my ideas are often the best. I believe other people often have the best ideas. So we can actually get students to match these together. So if we're in a real classroom, this would be a really nice um, uh, kinesthetic activity that students can do with some cards there. We can often do the, also do this online, something like, um, you know, you could do it on uh, Blackboard or something like that. Okay, you could get students to actually do this virtually as well. Okay, right, so that's an extension activity you could do. Let's go back, okay, into our lesson, go back to page 79, and we're going to have a look at the next activity. 
All right, so after the quiz, okay, the next thing we're going to look at here is the communication skill box, okay, influencing styles. So we've talked about um, what it means, okay, to have pull, push and pull. Uh, next, we're going to look at situations in which one would be better than the other. So sometimes it's clear that we should use push or we should use pull, but sometimes it's not so clear. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. So number one, it says there's a fire in the building. You need to get everyone to leave the building. OK, so first I want to ask you, OK, what what type of influencing is this? There's a fire. You need to get everyone out. the building. So it's definitely push. Why is it push influencing? Why is it push influencing? Do we have it's emergency? So there's no time. There's no time to waste. There's no time for negotiating. I'm not eliciting ideas. It's just you've got to get out now. OK, do it safely. Don't run. But you've got to get out now. So it's, it's telling people what to do. Right. This is my idea. My idea is the best. You've got to get out. OK, have a look at number four. You want your teacher to agree to your idea. You can change this to boss if you want. You want your boss to agree to your idea. Number four, you think your boss or your teacher knows more than you, okay? How about this situation? Is this push or pull? Okay, everyone's putting pull. Why is this pull influencing? So why is it pull? Because it's to a boss. Okay, because you need to listen to your boss, your teacher to be better informed. Right, it says, yeah, you think they know more than you. So just because they know more than you doesn't mean that you can't have a good idea, right? Okay, but maybe if they think they know more than you, we need to be careful in the way that we persuade them. So you recognize that the teacher knows better. Uh, we're going to probably have to change their viewpoint, okay? Geraldine says, we're considering the ability of others. Right, Geraldine, not just their ability, but also their position, right? Their social position is higher than ours. Yep. So maybe we need to be gentle in that and not so direct, right, Geraldine? Okay, Molam says, I want to follow his or her idea, not mine. At least he should believe that. Right, okay, yes. Yeah. So if we want to change someone, someone in authority, if we want to change their opinion, we often need them to think that, um, that I want to follow your idea, right? Not the other way around. And that's why we're asking questions to, to elicit that idea from them. Right, yeah, so these are some great ideas. So I think, um, you know, we've got some good examples here of the different types of influencing. Um, what do you think, your opinion here, which type of influencing, push or pull, which one do you think your students would have more problems with, more difficulty with understanding and explaining? So push or pull, which one do you think is more difficult? Well, I'm says pull. Myla says pull. I agree. And I think that's definitely true. It's, it's a more difficult concept. So one thing we could do, an activity that I think is nice to do here, we could actually get students to work on a role play to explain, in a sense, or give an example or a model of two people talking and someone exerting pull influence on someone else. So I had a go at this. Um, I, I, I recorded this short role play um, it's just a minute, so I'm just going to show it to you as an example, as a model, and get your feedback on it, okay? So it's not really high-quality recording, it just took us, we just did one take, but let's have a listen as well. Go. Mr. Lashett, can I talk to you about our homework? Yes, of course. What would you like to ask me? Well, we do homework after every lesson, and then at the start of every lesson, we go through all the answers one by one. So most of the time we're sitting without speaking. Yes, I suppose that's right. Um, I was wondering if there was another way to do it. What do you mean? Well, checking the homework is important, but it takes quite a lot of time. Do you think there is a way we can do it so we're speaking English during that time? Well, uh, we could do it in small groups. Yes, you could share the answers to one person in each group. 
and then that person can ask the others the answers and then explain the answers yes and, and we could change the question person each lesson that way everyone gets a turn and everyone in the group gets more chance to speak that sounds great thanks okay great so that's something very quick that we put together uh, es rackman has put in i was wondering right so that es rackman is an example of what so that phrase you picked out i was wondering what's that an example of here in this role play so yeah that is an example of pull influencing isn't it that phrase right there i was wondering if there was another way to do it so the student probably has their own ideas but they're not telling the teacher you should do this they're asking them do you have you know i don't know what you know what what do you think can you see uh, another example in there is there another example of the student using this pull influencing Yeah, so we could, right, okay, so a very gentle way of suggesting we could, okay, so it's not a forceful way of doing it, that's great, so tentative kind of suggestion. Um, one more. Okay, explaining. I was thinking maybe this sentence, oh, yeah, so someone's got it there. Do you think there is a way we can do it so we're speaking English during that time, right? So. The student really here saying there is a way, okay, but asking very gently. So I don't know, I don't know what you think about this. Um, my my aim here was to present a model for the students, and then what I would ask them to do next, I would ask them to write their own role play, which has examples of someone uh, using this pool style because it's more difficult to understand. Okay, so what do you think when when you when you listen to that when you read it? Uh, do you think this kind of model, would that help your students to get a better understanding of what pull influencing is, do you think? Um, or do you think that they'd be able to reproduce something like this following a model? And Mollum says yes. Okay, I've got a yes in capitals there. Yeah, so this is, I think, a really nice way. And of course, you can get students to act these out. Um, you can do this online. Um, and no, they won't. <laughs> and no, they won't. Okay, yeah, so... Um, yeah, definitely a way that we can uh, help them to get to grips with these concepts a little bit better. Thank you to my colleague Julie for helping me record this. Okay, I don't have a lot of time, so let's get back okay, into the lesson. Um, so I just talked a little bit. We, we actually found some examples of the language, and that's the next bit here. We've got a useful language box which shows us about the different language we can use. And we can see here that push influencing, it's statements, right? And there's a lot of modal verbs in here. You must, okay? You should, you have to. Okay, so push influencing uses statements and it uses strong language. Pull, okay, on the other hand, pull influencing, there are lots of what questions. So we're asking questions, open-ended questions, right? So we can see that the language we use in these are completely different. Uh, we could, you know, brainstorm other phrases, other words and phrases that we could use here. But I like this language box here because it makes it very clear. Strong statement for push, open-ended question for pull. OK, the task that they are going to do, we don't have time to do this today, unfortunately, planning a class trip and trying to influence others. I think there are two ways we could do this. The first way we could do it, if we, especially if we're online, we could get students in pairs to prepare a pitch. Right. And in the next lesson, we can give each pair maybe one minute to give their pitch to the class about what where we should go on our class trip. OK, now think about that. If your students are doing a pitch where they're telling students, you know, where we should go, what kind of influencing are they using there? If it's just a pitch, OK, there's not going to be really a discussion. So what type of influencing language are they going to use in their pitch? P-I-T-C-H. What do we think? Is that push influencing or is it pull influencing? 
I'll just type that in. Okay, make a pitch, right? So if you're um, selling your idea, basically. Right, so lots of you putting in here push, right? So yeah, so we can make this a push style activity. Another way we could do it, okay, we could put them into groups and we could get students to prepare individually, okay? And then maybe put them in groups of four or groups of six, and then they can have a discussion together where they're going to try and convince the other people, they listen to what they have to say, and then they're going to use language to try and convince them that they should adopt their idea, right? So if we're doing it this way, um, in a group, as a discussion, more like a negotiation, what types of, or what type of influencing do you think they'd be able to use in that activity? Right, Kamel says pull, and I agree. I think there's much more scope there to introduce this pull style of influencing where we're asking people questions about, you know, what they like, okay, and what they like doing. And that's how we can then um, get them to see our point of view, right? So we could do this in two different ways, one push and one pull. Last thing here, last activity, really nice kind of summary of the lesson. Uh, students are going to think about themselves, their communication style, are they a pusher or are they a puller? And do they think they can adapt to the other style? And question number two, what are the benefits for you of becoming good at both influencing styles? And I think that is a really important question. It's really getting us to think about, you know, if I want to be successful in my life, what are the tools that I need to do that? Um, so in the chat box for me now, maybe you can answer this question. Question number two, what are the benefits for everybody of becoming good at both influencing styles? What will that help us with in our lives? Not, I mean, as a student, but not just as a student in our jobs, um, you know, in academically, professionally, whatever we're talking about, how will this help us? Let's see if you can come up with a couple of ideas. Kamel says balance is everything. Right. OK, so, yes, we need to strike a balance in our life. If we're always trying to push people, people won't like us. Right. But if we're always trying to pull, we're never assertive. We're not going to get what we want. Right. No more stubborn donkeys as in the picture, says Moham. OK, that's great. So. Yeah, we can, you know, what we're trying to get our students to think about, or not just our students, everybody, we're trying to strike this balance in our life, right? And we're trying to increase those life skills which are going to benefit us. E.S. Rackman says students can have communicative competence, knowledge and socio-cultural. Great. Peaceful working environment. Okay, right, exactly. Okay, this can help us uh, promote a better environment of work. It's about listening and sharing, right? So it's about social emotional learning is right well, as well, S-E-L. Can Lin says, honestly, I'm a pusher, but I always try and control myself to keep the balance, right? And some people don't have that self-awareness. So that's what we're trying to raise here. Okay, great. Thank you for that. That was really, I really enjoyed that. It was really interesting seeing all your, all your input. So thank you for giving me so much um, so much input there. I'm going to go back into my slide deck and do a new share, and we'll just wrap up, okay? All right. Okay, so... Okay, so I don't have time to do all of these activities I had planned. So I just want to, yeah, just remind you, okay, so what we've been doing today, this lesson is from our brand new uh, program called Voices, um, which is an integrated skill series, okay, for young adults and adults in British and American English. Um, thank you, Julie, for putting that information into the chat box. So you can click on that link Julie just put in if you'd like to see some more information. Um, if you would like to really get more information about voices, if you've got any specific questions, if you'd like to talk to someone on our team, uh, you can send me an email, okay, william.lasher at sengage.com or andrew.tiffany at sengage.com, um, and, and we will be able to uh, handle your inquiry. So if you've got any 
any questions about anything we did today um, or about the Voices program in particular, please contact us. Um, you will have already received at least three emails from me in regards to this webinar. Um, your when you registered you got one from me and you had one today an hour ago which uh, was reminding you so that was from me so you can reply to that email okay if you want to speak to me about that um i also want to mention i was going to use it but i didn't have time to bring it into the lesson today which is a shame but we do have this professional development um program out at the moment called breaking through the street screen uh, i think I think um, Julie will put some information in about that. If you'd like some more information about this, you can also contact me or you can click on that link. Uh, Sasaki said, what is the CEFR level of the textbook used today? Sasaki, the lesson we did today is aimed at A1 level students, okay? A1 level uh, young adult or adult students. Um, we will be sending you a certificate of participation um, you will get that email tomorrow, okay, by the end of day tomorrow, which will have a link to the recording, um, and we'll have your certificate, okay, so wait until tomorrow afternoon, and you should have the email in your hands by then. Um, yeah, here are my email addresses once more, and I'd also like to bring to your attention our upcoming webinar this Thursday, so uh, Julie, can you put can you put the link to this in the chat box for me? So my colleague Andrew is going to be doing a really interesting webinar. It's a more academic slant. OK, this one, a more academic English type of uh, type of webinar. And it's the theme is about uh, plants and it's focusing on literacy and language development. And it is using the Reach Higher series, Can Lin. You are absolutely right. Uh, thank you, uh, Julie, for putting that into the chat box there. So, yeah, if you would like to attend another fantastic, interesting webinar, please, please join us. OK, please join us at Andrew's webinar. There's the link again from Julie, nglasia.com. So please join us with that. And final thing for me, um, if you haven't already joined us on Facebook, um, it'd be great if you could join our community of over 14,000 teachers in Asia. That's just our Asia page where we promote things such as all of our webinars. Um, so you'll be able to find out uh, information about what we've got coming up by following us on Facebook. So please do that. OK, just one more time. I'm going to put in our webinar page because I know there are lots of messages going in. So maybe uh, you might have missed that. So please go and register for the next webinar and keep your eyes posted because we'll have lots of more interesting webinars coming up soon as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm three minutes over time, but I hope you don't mind. Um, and yeah, it, I've, I've really enjoyed myself. So thank you. Thank you so much for participating and giving me such interesting answers. And I hope I hope you agree that that type of lesson would be great. I mean, it'd be great for anyone, wouldn't it? It's interesting. So it'd be great for anyone. Um, but for your language learners, as well as learning the language, they're learning those life skills. They're learning things which are going to benefit them in real life. OK, not just studying vocabulary and grammar. And that is really what Voices is all about. So, yeah, thanks once more for joining me and uh, wait for your email tomorrow from us with your certificate and the recording to the session. And please join us again soon. OK, thank you very much. Good night.